Welcome to Global Banking and Finance Review Awards. Global Banking and Finance Review is a leading brand name in the world of finance and banking. Their awards were created to recognize companies of all sizes that are prominent in particular areas of expertise and excellence within the global financial community. This time, we're proud to be able to offer an award to Tradesto at the heart of trading in Southeast Asia. The award is for fastest growing new ECM broker, Southeast Asia 2016. Tradesto is an online broker providing both private and institutional clients with a cutting edge platform. Tradesto is also known as a top-notch Forex Technologies provider. Tradesto's Technologies has developed an exceptional white label solution, fully customizable with step-by-step -step guidance or program for their customers. Tradesto also offers the lowest spread, deep liquidity access and direct to the market, making the service fast, accurate and transparent. Customers' funds are deposited in segregated bank accounts, making them 100% secure. Recently in London to receive the award from Global Banking and Finance Review's Michelle Farrell, Melvin Tan, Group Chief Executive Officer, and Samuel Law, Executive Director, Global Head of Risk Management. Well, Melvin Tan, welcome to London. Uh, lovely to see you here, and congratulations on winning the award from Global Banking and Finance Review. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, it's an honour. Uh, we are happy to be here. Tell us a little bit more about Tradesto and uh, what it stands for, and indeed why it's, uh, you think it stands apart from comp the competition. Well, Tradesto was a company that we started about four years ago, uh, or more than four years ago. Um, it had uh, very, very experienced shareholders, uh, basically ex-bankers, um, top lawyers and, uh, and um, people that really were very passionate about the forex industry. We came together to set up this company and um, we were very amazed at how much we have achieved over the last four years. I think uh, we are very focused. Um, Tradesto aims to be one of the largest uh, brokers for in Southeast Asia and in China. And uh, we would like to target people that are English speaking and Chinese speaking um, across this uh, part of the world. Now, your actual own operation uh, has a business strategy, I'm sure. Tell us a bit about what that is in Southeast Asia. You know, Southeast Asia is something that has been very exciting to me. You know, even when I was a young banker, I, I basically joined banks that were focused in Southeast Asia. I was formerly from a CIMB Bank um, and Maybank, which is one of the top five banks in Southeast Asia and that explained why I choose this strategy because I've been there and I've been flying around and you see immense potential um, across this continent. Um, you have a population of probably 600 million people and uh, out of which, you know, since I was born in the 1980s, um, the population has grown by more than 50 percent. Um, young working population and very, very uh, versatile. Um, I've flown to almost all um, the 10 countries, uh, minus Laos, uh, which I hope to visit Laos this year. And um, you can see, you can see that uh, people are very interested in trading um, currencies, you know, um, amongst other products. So um, we made a very distinct strategy to, um, in, in the next three to five years time, we must have a presence and an office, I mean, in all 10 of the Southeast Asian countries and China. So obviously a massive uh, area to cover and a large population as you just mentioned there. Let's look at your own team now. Uh, how do they actually support your clients and give them the best kind of service? Well, how, how we basically uh, fight to reduce our cost and actually um, leverage on the economies of scale is that we have chosen uh, to set up our operations office, which means our middle office and our back office in Malaysia, Kuala Lumpur. And the reason why I think the cost is modest, and uh, we are able to find talented uh, individuals in the forex broking space uh, that uh, are both being able to speak in uh, English and also in Chinese. And uh, what we have been very lucky to find in the last few years also is that these people who can speak English and Chinese can also speak some Chinese dialects like Cantonese, Hokkien, 
um, Teochew, and even um, Bahasa Malay. And uh, that has been very helpful because we have staff that can speak five or six languages and you're able to fly them to other places to conduct business development activities or events, uh, etc. So um, with that being said, we have a strong middle office and back office that can support the other regional officers. We have already won half the battle. We don't have to replicate this middle office and back offices in those countries and therefore we save a lot of costs. And this cost savings can be transferred to our clients. And that's why we've been able to compete very aggressively in certain spaces and our competitors have been scratching their heads, how come Chodesto can do it? Now, the next part is that we must be able to find what I call champions or heroes in those individual uh, countries. So if we intend to go to uh, Vietnam, or we intend to go to Myanmar, then we have to find a very strong Burmese um, partner, if not a hero champion that we have to groom in those countries. And having this entire spectrum covered, we then have now a very strong headquarters in Kuala Lumpur that can support that regional officers. And those regional officers then become front-facing, uh, front officers, uh, business development centers, client services centers that we'll be able to expand in our plan to grow regionally. Well, I think if they can speak five languages, they're all heroes, actually, <laughs> but uh, very impressive. Yes. But obviously, behind that, behind the people, uh, like in all banks, you have technology, and that's a very vital part of uh, banking and trading in, in this day and age. Tell me a little bit about the, the technology platform that you have. Yeah, you're absolutely right. I think in this day and age, we have spoken so much about FinTech, and uh, FinTech has contributed um, a great deal to how the entire forex industry, especially the retail forex uh, space, uh, in the last six years. And um, therefore, Chodesto takes pride in um, building a very strong foundation. And this foundation comes from our backbone, which is IT services, or I call it the shed or integrated IT services, not only in terms of um, network and uh, infrastructure or how fast our servers are, which is very important to clients, uh, the integrity of our servers, being able to keep our, um, our servers up and running and making sure there's no downtime. Uh, we also have to invest in research and development um, and technology, uh, improving uh, to ensure that we are at least on the benchmark of the industry or if not even better. So what we have done is that we have uh, structured out another uh, separate company um, within the Tredesto uh, group family um, to basically do research and development and to develop um, state-of-the-art technologies that we are, will be proud of to bring our company into the future. So we have to be always three to five years, if not ten years ahead of the game. If not, we will be extinguished. It is uh, as simple as that. I've seen many companies in, uh, in the last six years uh, disappear because they're not being able to compete on technology. And therefore, um, the company that we created has a product called Sparrow, or One Sparrow. And um, this product basically fits the Asian market that we are targeting, basically Southeast Asia and China. Their demands, their needs are very different from the American and European markets. And I'm proud to say that uh, in the last uh, two years since inception, we have many, many white labels, many, many uh, introducing brokers that have been very happy with our product. Well, you mentioned white labels there. That, that's uh, obviously one of the, uh, the, 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 the vital parts of your technology. What exactly is that? And tell me more about white label. You know, white labels is something that you know, people use very loosely you know, in the forex industry. It's basically when someone, you know, people think that you know, if you take a brand uh, and then you just use that brand's technology and you just put your brand on that uh, technology, you become a very successful white label. And no, it actually it's not true. I've seen cases whereby um, white labels are not careful, they choose the wrong technology, they choose the wrong partners to work with, and uh, eventually they clash over a certain period of time, or they, you know, they give up. And, and one of the reasons why is because um, the white label provider and the client, which is the white label itself, they are not aligned. They are not aligned. And therefore, um, I've reminded 
uh, the entire company, you know, my staff, and I've reminded them many times that when we bring on board the white label, we are partners for life. We are here to see them grow and grow and grow and become a successful full-fledged broker. Our clients find tremendous value in working with us because our, our, our goals are aligned and we want them to be successful because their success means Tradesto success. Is, that's really excellent, a very good overview there, and obviously training a very vital part of the operation, and perhaps we can come on to that whilst talking to one of your colleagues a little later. Yes. Also, though, looking ahead to the future, because you've been talking about now, what kind of plans do you have? Any exciting developments you can share with us uh, looking into the future? Yes, indeed. Um, you know, we believe uh, strongly and earnestly in working with uh, key partners, and uh, we are not afraid to share. And um, when we go into other people's country, we know that we are not boss. They also um, are our boss. So, so you know, with this uh, shared vision in mind, we want to find right partners that are strong enough, that are capa capable enough to take Tradesto to the next level in those various individual countries. And therefore, um, we have made a commitment to find at least three to five partners in the next two years that we believe can bring our brand to the next level in those countries and we have made a commitment to open up offices in those countries and also made a commitment to allocate the necessary resources including money to those countries that we want to expand in and in, in the next one to two years in the next one to two years we want to be in three countries we want to be in Vietnam we want to be in Myanmar and last but not least, we want to be able to set up a full-fledged office in China. So big challenges ahead there, really, because obviously those are countries which do have their challenges. I wish you every success, and thank you so much uh, for talking to much. us today. Yeah, thank you very much, Bill. It was a, a great pleasure. Thank, thank you, you very so much. much. We also spoke to Executive Director Samuel Law and got his evaluation of the current trading market in Southeast Asia. Well, Southeast Asia is a peculiar market um, in the sense that it ties into two main, uh, two main elements where it affects uh, market growth. First of all, it will be broadband penetration, and second of all will be mobile penetration. Now, I need to explain myself that way. Um, as you can see, Southeast Asia is made up of uh, mostly third world countries, right? And we have Singapore being the uh, leading, in, uh, leading country in terms of technology. I guess it's about 90% broadband penetration. Um, Malaysia, next country, is almost reaching about 80% penetration. And um, you know, Thailand and uh, Vietnam and Indonesia, uh, the governments have put immense investment into this infrastructure. And it does immediately give a uh, net positive effect to us, to all brokers. Why? Because uh, broadband penetration would allow traders to trade. Any, anywhere they want. Now, broadband penetration will also in, uh, improve the, um, the education aspect, so, and as well as marketing aspect. So basically, you just open uh, the forex market to, to more people. Yeah. And next will be mobile. Uh, everybody is uh, living on a mobile phone today, and um, most countries in Southeast Asia, is, is, uh, except for Myanmar, um, Cambodia uh, have not implemented 4G. So 4G itself uh, would, would enable um, traders to trade uh, faster on their, on their mobile. So, for, so 4G is very important for those it is, who don't it know. I mean, it's obviously a very fast form of, of mobile phone yes, connection. Yes, And that is. actually is, is, is very part and integral to, to the operations that you're involved with. Yeah, yeah it is. It is because these these two elements uh, actually ensure the uh, market uh, accessibility for for us. So basically, it is a net positive effect for all brokers. Yeah. So, how would you describe the market trends in in your trading area at the moment? How are they developing? Well, um, we can. There are few few evolve um, trends. Uh, trends have evolved over the years. Um, I remember year 2005, 2006, uh, those are the really green pasture, green time. <laughs> I mean, for, for those uh, older brokers who, who have uh, came into, into our market. 
at, a, at that time, they were riding on the uh, rising infrastructure of broadband penetration, right? And, and a lot of uh, Gen Y and Gen X have started um, experiencing internet and um, they, then they define Forex education online. And a lot of all these uh, market trends were, were focused on education at that time. And everybody was uh, trading from the desktop. Okay. Now, um, and most of the trading were done manually. Then, as the trend evolved uh, af af after that, after the Lehman Brothers uh, um, case, um, volatility has uh, rise uh -huh. uh, a lot. And you're talking about um, some some pairs actually move a few hundred pips, uh, even a thousand pips a day. Now, with that kind of volatility, cli clients got burned and they were searching for the next holy grail, mm -hmm. you see. So the next holy grail would be like ro robots and stuff like that, and they were looking for the next guru who can guide them. And that is perpetually the trend, and it has becoming uh, more and more e evolved into um, automated trading, um, social trading, and stuff like that. But uh, mostly as of today, market trend has uh, evolved to more of um, automated trading, and um, demand on execution is uh, getting more and more important and yeah that that is the biggest uh, change we can see and you mentioned that you touched upon one of the big events in the financial world of course the whole uh, lehman mm -hmm. brothers issue yeah there have been others more recently we have a you know major terrorist issues around the world ongoing uh, in in britain here in the uk of course the the big uh, story was uh, brexit the so-called leaving mm -hmm. of the european union yeah. How do those things affect the kind of work you do? Oh yeah, risk management um, for a broker is uh, very important. Um, in fact, Tradesto is one of the first few brokers um, who has implemented a lowering of uh, leverage on uh, pound-related products um, one month ahead of a Brexit uh, referendum. Now. We, we gave out these uh, notices to, to our, all our clients and partners because our, our liquidity providers, the banks, um, were cautioning us and everyone in the industry that uh, look out for volatility. Now, uh, we, this is because of the lessons learned during Lehman Brothers, uh, especially so, uh, not so uh, distant few, uh, past was uh, the Swiss National Bank um, decision to to unpack itself from euro within seconds all liquidity just went off went off the ECN so and it affects a lot of brokers at that time and that served as a lesson uh, to all of us especially uh, myself in risk management that uh, we view these events as uh, really a potential black swan event and in fact we, we did pretty well um, we even guide our white labels to, to follow the follow suit the, the same mechanism which we put in place, so that that would protect their tr their clients, uh, not to overexpose themselves unnecessarily during that high volatility. So you you've learned to expect the unexpected and be ready for it if you can. Yeah. Yes, we we try to anticipate. This is not easy. No. You know, it's it's hard to find black swan nowadays. <laughs> <laughs> but it just pop out, and it, it could it could uh, be catastrophic. It, you can you would never know um, when is the next black swan event. Uh, I know that you uh, provide ECN trading. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me why you think there is an advantage to this this form of trading? What what are the advantages of it, indeed? Um, ECN trading is um, is a popular way uh, today for for traders to get access to execution. You know, as as uh, the infrastructure evolve into um, higher speed um, broadband. Everybody is looking for reduced latency execution. So, well, ECN would, would help us uh, help traders to access the market uh, in, in a very, I would say, continuous uh, pattern. So, because you see, um, it allows traders to access to a deeper pool of liquidity. That's the uh, number one benefit because we pull all, all these uh, banks together. 
and uh, we have much more liquidity pool from different institutions you wouldn't know from where but um, the debt of these uh, on the bid and the ask will be good for traders uh, and you see continuity and uh, traders will be able to take advantage of news news trading uh, they could um, implement some of the higher volatility trading pattern so ECN would enable all that uh, where previously um, it, they, they couldn't uh, do, do that. Yeah. No. Yeah. Now, uh, in addition to providing Forex, mm -hmm. what other kind of tra trading services do you actually provide, tra trading platforms? Um, we try to uh, fulfill what the clients want. And we try to anticipate what uh, clients want in the future. Now, for instance, um, we did uh, look at uh, several products like um, CFDs. Uh, di these are common products which uh, clients have. So we do look at some other products like options for the future. Um, it's getting more and more popular. It's not, not binary options, it's more of a Forex options uh, product uh, which we are still sourcing out um, good ones and, and uh, even money management products to, to gain access to portfolio management um, with, by working hand in hand with uh, good partners. So that these are the products which we um, attempt to um, bring to the market that uh, clients uh, feed back to us. I think uh, Tradesto do grow, do bring in a lot of uh, new clients to this uh, route. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, presumably <laughs> for those clients and for, for traders in particular, mm -hmm. training is important. Yeah. How important do you, do you see the start of, of training and, and ongoing training uh, for traders themselves? Oh, it is extremely important. Um, I mean, education and training for traders who aspire to be a professional trader or, or, or to be better in, in trading is, is very important. You cannot discount that fact. Um, well, I know there are too many gurus out there, right, who claim to be uh, the best in, in their own rights. Um, as a trader myself, I've been trading for a good 18 years. Now, um, we're still learning. Market changes all the time. Um, we have new trends, new volatility, new, new system. And we need to learn all that. And along the way, improve ourselves. So I would always say that a trader is, is um, like a soccer player, right? If you want to be a Cristiano Ronaldo, or if you want to be a Messi, right? You, you need to really work hard and, and uh, look at your, your strength and weakness and try to improve on your stats, right? And as a trader, that, that is very important. And um, that is why Tradesto, we, we strive to work with uh, good academies. We, we try not to look at individuals, but um, we look at um, academies like, uh, recently we work with uh, one academy like uh, Rubrics Academy from, um, from Singapore. Um, we work with a few others uh, who are based in Thailand and, and Malaysia. And uh, we, find, we find that uh, people are hungry to learn, but just do not know where to look for. And they are afraid to pay crazy money for some holy grail, where there's no such thing as a holy grail. Yeah, you, know? uh, you see, the life of a tra trader is like a... Um, I like to I like to put put in a way that it's like a life a checkered box, right? You have a black day, you have a white day, okay? You have a winning day, you have a losing day. It's it's how you manage your winnings, and how you manage your losses, and at the same time that this, this requires a lot of uh, skills and and you know control of emotion and and stuff like that. And you definitely to succeed, you need mentors and. Yeah, I like your analogy with uh, soccer players uh, and uh, crazy money because the two <laughs> might go together quite well in some cases. Yeah. In the meantime, I know you've got a lot of work to do, so it's been really good talking to you today. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you for coming to London for talking. Right. Thank you. Pleasure.